let's talk about area density as a ratio of kilograms per square meter. So the surface area of the entire spherical object, and what's the formula for surface area of a sphere, isn't it? 4 pi r squared, right? So if we were to divide the total mass by the total area, which at some point we'll substitute for total area 4 pi capital R squared, if we divide the total mass by the total surface area, that should be every bit the same as the mass of this ring divided by its surface area, which we'll have to call dA. Now, for now, that's sort of a question. How do we represent this dA? Uh, let me give you an idea how we can do that. Okay, so imagine we cut along that line right there. If I cut the ring at that line and unfold it, I will end up with a shape that looks something like this. And we know what the length would be. That's simply the value I get if I cut and unwrap a circle of radius r. So this is going to have a length of 2 pi lowercase r. Now this is a non-zero height. This takes up some small height. So let's think of it this way. If I were to work my way from here along the perimeter until I get to the location of that ring, I've worked along some arc length. Uh, but if we look at this really carefully here, I'll look over here on this side of it. All right, that gets me to the lower part of the ring. And then if I go just a little farther around the perimeter, that gets me to the upper portion of this ring. So I've got really a small change in the arc length, which I'll call ds. We know in general, working our way around the perimeter of a circle, that s is equal to r theta. And I think from there, we can make a statement that ds is equal to r d theta. So there's a little change in angle. Um, I suppose this line goes to the lower bound, the lower bound of my ring shape. And then I can draw a second line at a slightly greater angle that reaches the upper bound of this ring. So this is the ds we're referring to, which is equal to r d theta. And the d theta is just this small angle here. All right? Hopefully that's not too messy. I can draw it again if it helps. Exaggerate the thickness of the ring just a little bit to help illustrate the point. All right. So there's one angle, and there's a slightly larger angle. As far as angle is concerned, that increase in angle from the first value of theta to the second one is a d theta, and that little bit of thickness, ds, is r times d theta. Okay, so instead of dm, we'll replace it with capital M over A times dA, right? dm is capital M over A times dA. Okay, so step three. I equals, take the M over A out of the integral, we're left with the integral of R squared dA. Okay, so what is dA? Well, dA would just be length times width, a length of 2 pi R, and a width of r d theta. So instead of writing dA, I'm going to substitute for it 2 pi r times capital R d theta. Moving on.
there's a constant and a constant and a constant that can be taken out of the integral sign. So now we have i equals 2 pi m capital R over a times the integral of r squared and r gives us r cubed d theta. Uh-oh, 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 now we have two variables and we want to turn it into calculus of a single variable. So let's find a way to substitute in place of r. All right. Draw the picture one more time. There is one of our rings that we identify as dm. It has a radius of lowercase r. This length drawn is capital R. If I drop a line vertically down to make a right triangle, the adjacent side to this angle theta is that lowercase r. So if I were to take cosine of theta, that would be equal to the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. In other words, that would be r over r, lowercase r over capital R. So lowercase r is equal to capital R times cosine theta. So little r cubed is equal to big R cubed cosine cubed of theta. Here we can employ a little trick and say that cosine cubed of theta is the same thing as uh, cosine squared theta cosine theta. But cosine squared theta, as you know, is 1 minus sine squared. So there we go. 1 minus sine squared theta times cosine theta is the same thing as cosine cubed theta. So in all, lowercase r cubed is equal to capital R cubed times 1 minus sine squared theta cosine theta. So there's a substitution we can make in place of lowercase r cubed. So that gets us to step number five. I equals two pi m r over a. This a represents the surface area of the whole spherical shell, which is four pi capital R squared. And now we have the integral of capital R cubed 1 minus sine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta. Pi and pi cancel out. R cancels with R squared. 2 over 4 is 1 half. I equals capital M over 2R pull out the r cubed, so times r cubed, times the integral of 1 minus sine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta. We can do u substitution. Wait, before we get to u sub, we need to work out our limits of integration. So, the very first ring we would have to make would be somewhere down here and it would have practically zero radius. And then we work our way up to another ring and another ring and keep stacking together all these rings. And finally, the very last one is way up here at the top. Again, where the radius is practically zero. But let's look at the angle. This angle from the center down to here, well, it's practically negative pi over two or negative 90 degrees. And the last one is way up here at practically positive 90 degrees. In fact, if we're making all of these values of dm infinitesimally small, then it's exactly 90 and negative 90. So there are the limits of integration for theta from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. Let's let u equal sine theta, then du is cosine theta d theta. That's nice. We have a cosine theta d theta, so that can all be substituted with du. 
and then 1 minus sine squared would be 1 minus u squared. And as long as we're letting u equal sine theta, the sine of negative 90 degrees would give us negative 1, and the sine of positive 90 degrees would give us positive 1, or we could do it like this. Instead of adding up rings all the way from the bottom to the top, we could just use symmetry and just go from theta equals 0 degrees up to 90 and then multiply by 2. Let's do that. So instead of a lower limit of negative 90, we'll go with a lower limit of 0 degrees, but then we have to multiply by 2, but that will cancel that 2. So now we're left with I equals, let's see, that R and this R cubed cancel out to leave us with an R squared. And this is coming out pretty nice. We got I equals MR squared times the integral of 1 minus U squared DU. As theta goes from 0 degrees to 90 degrees is the same thing as U goes from 0 to 1. So the integral of 1 minus u squared du is the same as the integral of 1 minus x squared dx. A variable by any other name would smell as sweet as Shakespeare might say. So if we were to um, evaluate that integral, we'd be left with x minus 1 third x cubed. Okay, so we can say the integral of 1 minus u squared du is u minus one-third u cubed. And we need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So i is equal to mr squared times whatever this evaluates to. So the upper limit of 1, this gives us 1 minus one-third. And the lower limit of 0 just gives us 0. And 1 minus one-third is two-thirds. Oh, there it is. Hey. We reached the final step, and we got exactly what we said we would get. I equals two-thirds mr squared for a hollow sphere, otherwise known as a spherical shell.